Welcome to Virtual Concert Hall's live music channel. I'm James Welch, your host for today's show. We are connecting musicians and audiences in real-time performances and music news from around the globe. Today's program consists of a mix between our artist portrait and laureate ensembles. Now, why that mix? Because we are blessed with the wonderful privilege of having the director of this season's laureate guitar ensemble with us. He's a wonderful musical artist, and he is the amazing Julio Reyes. <clears throat> Julio was born in Oakland, California, and started the guitar at the age of five under the uh, tutelage of his father, a former musical diplomat in Paraguay, South America, who studied with a student of Augustin Berrios. He gave his first recital at 12, and at 17 performed the Concerto de Aranues with um, Richard Buckley and the Oakland Symphony Orchestra. Julio's performed in Europe, South America, and the Caribbean. At age nine, he started his studies on cello and eventually became a member of the Oakland Symphony Youth Orchestra under the direction of Kent Nagano. After being principal cellist for two years, he became the maestro's assistant conductor. He has enjoyed being an educator for many years, conducting youth orchestras in the U.S., Cuba, and Paraguay since the late 80s, giving lectures on the life and music of Augustin Berrios at conservatories, college music departments, and guitar societies here and abroad, teaching guitar and teaching music at Holy Names High School in Oakland, California for the past few years. Currently, he continues teaching guitar privately, gives lectures, recitals, and freelance conducts whenever possible. So in addition to directing our guitar ensemble this season, Julio is a three-time winner in the Progressive Musicians and Sound Percivo events. In addition to his fabulous playing, he is also an educator, conductor, and composer. And today, we will get to know a little bit more about him in all of those wheelhouses. So, uh, we have Julio here. Uh, welcome, Julio. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thanks a lot for having me here. We're great to have you here on this program. And um, wh where are you right now? Right now, I'm in my dining room of my home here in Freestone, California. It's in Northern California. I'm around 15 minutes east of Bodega Bay, where uh, they filmed The Birds by Alfred Hitchcock. Oh, wow. That's nice. And I'm sure there's a lot of birds out in those wooded areas by your house. Oh, yeah. <coughs> Lots of birds, hawks, buzzards, the whole bit. Yeah. And, I mean, you were telling me a little bit about, like, how you get to practice on your porch. What? Like during the sunrise? I mean... Yeah, I live on a 44-acre farm. And so every morning around eh, 5 or 6, if I have a gig coming up, what I'll do is I'll get my guitar and I'll sit on the west-facing porch. It's still dark, but I'll see the sun hit the top of the redwood trees across the meadow from me. And the sun will get closer and closer and closer. And once the sun is over me, I'll get to the other side of the build of the house where now it's in the shade and I'll just practice there. But it's so tranquil, very relaxing. Uh, it's just a perfect environment for creativity. Wow, that, that's wonderful. And you also said something motivational, too. I mean, <laughs> we're always telling our students, you should practice first thing in the morning. And yeah. that that's what you're doing. I mean, you have a great sunrise and a great place to do that. But this is someone who's getting up at 4 or 5 in the morning to practice. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a great way to start the day because your your brain is very fresh. Um, when it's dark like that, you can really zero in on what you're doing, your tonal quality, uh, your expressiveness. Uh, none of the troubles of the day have interfered in what you're doing. And so you have a clean slate emotionally. And I mean, what a great way to, to play music and do some uh, self-music therapy before this day starts. That's truly inspiring and just wonderful. Um, so, and 
I mean, it it obviously works. Um, I mean, you you have you, you, it works great. I mean, you you have a qu- quite the history with us over the last um, two years. Yeah. Um, your first adventure um, with um, progressive musicians was on our. Uh, 2020, 2021 uh, combined winners recital at Carnegie Hall. Right. Um, and we finally were able to get to Carnegie in February of 22. And if you see that picture on the left there, I mean, we see that you're wearing a mask. I mean, like, because we, we're still having masking rules back then. I mean, yeah. man, it, it's so, so glad that we've um, come out of that a little bit. But I mean, I just remember thinking, what a, what a refined performer. And then you chose to, um, sign up and for auditions again for many of our events i mean you performed in the cold orchestra concerto concert with the western new york chamber orchestra this past Mm -hmm. february and then you were back with us at carnegie hall this past june Mm -hmm. performing with the new york chamber players orchestra Mm -hmm. um um so i mean it's you it's been great having you along for that ride and hmm. you're going to continue more rides with us and we're, yeah. we're so thrilled about that um, yeah i've really enjoyed um being part of this competition um it's a very unique competition in the sense that you have different age categories and then you have an amateur category and a professional category so it really opens it up for anybody to compete in the guitar hmm. world most competitions it's You know, up and they cut off at 35 years old Mm. or 40. After that, many of them do, yeah. You know, you you can't compete anymore. Well, when I was coming up, um, there there were guitar competitions, but not the slew of them that there are now, and they were expensive. And you know, my family, I'll admit it, we were you know on food stamps. We grew up very poor, so I couldn't afford to do all these uh, competitions. And so um, I have sort of been doing a little bit of swimming upstream a little bit right now. Mm -hmm. But like I was saying, the great thing about uh, progressive musicians is that they do have the category. So like the first concert that I did uh, at Carnegie, it was a marathon concert. But every single musician from the little five-year-old that started to, you know, (laughs) me, everybody was really good and so nobody left it was a marathon concert and everybody stayed it was amazing seeing this little five-year-old go up there and climb up onto the bench and then play this incredible she couldn't even touch the ground (laughs) exactly (laughs) and and she played this incredible (laughs) Chopin nocturne all the professionals were in the balcony watching and all at the same time we were yeah we were amazed and and I met her afterwards, and she's just the cutest little precocious kid. So um, yeah. I've had a blast, and, and I can't thank you enough for giving me the opportunity to uh, realize a dream of, of playing at Carnegie Hall. Oh, well, thank you for that. Yeah, I mean, it's it's just, it was great to have you and great to keep thank having you. you. And, um, you know, I'm moving along here. Um, uh, our audience knows you very well as a guitarist, um, mm-hmm. but I think um, we need to tell them some more of what they don't know and Uh-oh. we there, there's quite a bit here um <laughs> and we're gonna try to cover it all in an hour but um sure. <laughs> maybe not but, um we'll have to have a part two or three but sure. um you know what people don't know is that you're also quite the accomplished conductor yeah and, i've um, been conducting for a while de- definitely and um we have um your s- some of your highlights that you had given us that we'd like to show right now. Um, But before we do that, um, I want to mention to our viewers that we stream all of our broadcasts here on all of our social media channels and on YouTube. And while we are streaming, um, you can leave a comment in the chat of whatever platform and or, or a question, and one of our technical wizards can flash it up here on the screen. Oh, yeah, here we go. Yeah, Dina, thank you. Greetings. Welcome. Thank you for watching. And you know, there'll be many more, and we'll have some time later where we can show your comments. So um, don't don't be shy. You know, say say some fun things or just say hello, and uh, we will check in with all of you later. But for now, let's let's watch that clip. Enjoy.
to stop, but we may at times stop if the soloists want to change certain tempos or entrances and exits just to go over things. So uh, we will try to be as uh, diligent. <laughs> Or it's always the same way. It's like you're a buckling bronco and you're just ready to go. It's careful, it's not a, it's once we get into the tempo, like in jazz, we say play in the pocket, that's where we gotta be. Do a little bit slower, okay? I'll give you two to, before. One and uh, and okay now um, the way that I want you to interpret this is Ba -da -ba -ba -da. Ba -da 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 -da. Okay, those the third measure make those more fluid. Da -da 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 -da. Ba -da -ba -ba -da. And really make it short that last beat uh, of the first measure. Okay. One, That's so fun to watch. and Yeah, there were some great orchestras. Um, the first one that you saw, that was the Holy Names University Orchestra. Okay. Um, in the, that big performance. And I was going to ask uh, if that was a professional you, group. They sound great. No, uh, Holy Names had a great orchestra, a yeah. really good orchestra. I was very happy to be conducting them for a few years. And then, um, uh, since I fell for you, that was with the Dubrovnik Symphony Orchestra uh, when we did a trip to Croatia. Oh, and wow. then the opera where I was standing and talking to them, wearing a tie, that was uh, Prince Albert's Private Orchestra in Monaco. I was conducting an opera there, and uh, an American opera, and uh, that was the first rehearsal that I had with them. Um, so a great orchestra. I've, I've been very blessed to conduct some great groups. Wow, wonderful. And now, were they were any of these professional groups or were they student groups? Or um, Well, Prince Albert of Monaco, it's his, his private orchestra. So they do a lot of the, wow. the big, big functions, uh, uh, government royalty type functions. Um, well, Holy Names University, it's a university orchestra. Uh, the Dubrovnik Symphony, they're a professional symphony. Um, wow. I've also was lucky enough to conduct members of the Vienna Philharmonic in an all or, uh, Mozart concert in uh, Salzburg in the residence plots, where it was the Royal Hall where uh, Mozart worked. So we did oh an all goodness. Mozart concert in the room where Mozart worked. Oh my which goodness. Was like yeah. I've been in that room. That, that, I'm sure that's, um, wow, that, that had to be amazing. I would have loved it if there was a concert oh. going on when I walked through there. Um, it was maybe amazing. about five years ago I was there. And yeah. um, it was, oh. A truly inspirational place on its own. Well, but uh, you know, so we have a uh, symphony, opera, jazz, pop. I mean, you do it all. Um, well, it's one of those things where I I have lots of different likes. You know, I'm also a jazz bass player and, and played in a country band for a long time and did a lot of opening acts for Trisha Yearwood and other people. So um, I, I enjoy that's being great. multifaceted. Wow, wonderful! Now, how do you prepare for a rehearsal like that? I mean. Yeah, I mean, what, what what is like one big thing that you do when you know that you're going to be conducting a big orchestra or just a, a, a group, a jazz group? Or well, it depends what what it is. For the opera, um, it, it was it was an interesting event that performance itself because all the people that were on stage 
were the people that came on the trip. They're not professional singers. And so what we did was we gave all the passengers a CD of the recording with the orchestra and a professional soprano, alto, tenor, or bass singing their part. I gave the CD to all these passengers. I said, on the way to work, on the way home, as you're hanging out, as you're cooking, just play it in the background. A few months before the performance, we got together and started rehearsing, and it was a piece of cake because all these people, they were learning these tunes like they were learning another tune from listening to the radio. Oh, so that's great. through osmosis, I had a few ringers in each section, so it worked out really well. Wonderful. It's a great way to like um, just figure out, you know, how your part fits, you know, yeah. when you don't have access to the entire yeah. score to just read through with an open yeah. score and get out your um, microscope and try to follow along as you practice. Yeah. yeah and <laughs> the Dubrovnik situation where the performance was Since I Fell For You, that orchestra had never played any jazz oriented pieces. No so kidding. the first time that we played like a major seven chord, a real jazzy sounding chord, they were like, oh, wow, this is <laughs> really cool. So it, it was a beautiful experience. Wow. Wow. Uh, that, that's wonderful. I mean, that's so inspirational here, too. Um, it's wonderful. And, you know, I mean, speaking of like new music and experiences, I mean, you're, you're also a composer. And yeah. what type of pieces have you written? I mean, for guitar. Um, I've written three pieces, three pieces um, on guitar, and I have a melody already in my head with chords for uh, a jazz tune. Uh, it's more of a samba-oriented tune, but it'd be for a sax in the rhythm section. I just haven't written it out yet. So. Yeah. Well, oh, yep. I mean, it's you got your sketches, and we we all have these like little ideas that mm -hmm. eventually become pieces. And yeah. I you know from my own experience, um, yeah, it, they could be be interesting to see how you work those into new ideas mm -hmm. and how the creativity mm -hmm. flows um do you um do you do any arrangements or writing for other instruments or symphonies um, when i was teaching high school um i had a bunch of violinists and one sax player and so i was making my own arrangements of tunes uh speaking of since i fell for you i did an arrangement of that of str uh, for strings and a sax doing the, the lead line um did some other arrangements for my kids um, and I had to make it simple enough for them to be able to play it uh, but still make it musically interesting so that was yeah. always a fun challenge um, but uh, yeah some arranging when I have to uh, in that situation but it, I don't sit down and say oh I think I'll write an arrangement of this mm -hmm. or that you know it just comes to me and I I got to write it out quick before I forget it yeah mm -hmm. you have the musicians and then you just figure out a way to make the piece work and exactly you know, that that's just the fun and magic that we yeah. all create as yeah. um, performing musicians as well mm -hmm. many times um so I mean you mentioned three pieces for guitar right Right. Yeah. So, I mean, I understand you're prepared to play them today. I mean, you already have the yes, guitar in your I lap am. there. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to um, we'll, we'll give you a minute to kind of like get yourself together here. And I'd just like to mention while he's getting ready that we have um, Julio is going to be directing our very first Laureate Guitar Ensemble this summer at Carnegie Hall. Now, um, it's going to be a three-day workshop, in intensive workshop. We are, we're accepting applications. We'll have live auditions. And then you come to New York and work with Julio for three days, putting together a full guitar ensemble program. And it uh, culminates with a performance on our Laureate Gala at Carnegie Hall on July 1st. Now, I must mention as well, um, there's actually two hidden workshops in this uh, the auditions itself will be like a live online workshop in some ways and w we'll say more about that a little bit later um for right now uh we need we need to hear julio's great pieces here um so we will bring him back to the center stage and give him that spotlight as he performs his own beautiful compositions julio welcome back
So that piece is called Onward to Paradise. It's a piece that I wrote some years ago when some two friends of mine, one was Philip Roshiger, a very well-known classical guitarist. Um, he actually wrote pieces for uh, other professional guitarists. David Russell, who won a Grammy um, on the album that Philip wrote this piece. And um, so he passed away. And then two weeks later, another lady, um, Patricia Nelson. She was like my second mom. Uh, I'd known her from the time I was... 17 or 18, and uh, I played musicals for her. She was a director of, of uh, shows out in Point Richmond, and uh, she basically adopted me and took me into her family all the holidays, Christmas, and Thanksgiving I would spend over there. So um, this piece just came to me one day when I was practicing, and I had just had to write it out. So um, there you go. So um, if you'd like, I can go ahead and play the next two pieces if that is okay with James. Yes, yes, let's okay. continue. Yeah, yeah, okay. keep your spotlight. I'm enjoying this. Okay, this piece, it's called Ballerina. And uh, I wrote it when I was going to be getting married. And uh, when I said my vows, I surprised my wife with, with this. Uh, we're not married anymore, but I still play the piece. Um, so this is called Ballerina. And uh, the last piece that I wrote is one that when we were in COVID lockdown, I was teaching high school and um, I really missed my kids. And so I was thinking to myself, it would be a great day when we can finally all get together. 
And I love Sami music, all Brazilian music I just love. And so this tune popped into my head. It's called Bon Dia, which in Portuguese means good morning or good day. So, bon dia. Wow. Well, that, that was great, Julio. Thank I mean, you. there's just so many different styles of playing that you just bring through so well. Um, and it, it's always a pleasure to hear you play. Thank and you. Thank you. I, I believe we have a few comments that uh -oh. we can um, put up on the screen here. Um, let's see. Uh, Dina Erickson, greetings from New Jersey. Welcome, Dina. And... You know, oh, and Anna's commenting here. Yep. Hello, Dina. Thank you for joining us. Inspirational. <laughs> yes, he is. Yes, indeed he is. Yeah. Well, um, you know, meet the fabulous Julio Reyes, a diverse artist, guitarist, conductor, arranger. Yes, he is. Yep. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, um, you know, I was just sitting here enjoying and listening, and y you have such a knack for uh, bringing out different tone colors and voicings within the piece you know so sometimes it's like listening to you play like two or three guitars all at the same time and it, it, it's really neat i remember you making mention of that like on your the master class that you did with the fredonia students and just thinking wow you know it's it's just neat to like you know i mean with just two hands you know make it yourself voice like in For three me, different instruments what's helped me a lot is conducting um, when you conduct, you don't think like a guitar player. You have to think about the overall melody, the counter melody, the, the, you know, everything else that supports all that. And so conducting has helped my guitar playing immensely. Um, another thing that I do is um, lots of times I'll practice in the dark. And what happens is your breathing becomes more relaxed. So you can actually get into more of your emotional spectrum your hearing becomes a lot more acute, so you can actually hear your tonal quality, especially if you're sitting. This works great for singers, too. Yeah. If you're sitting right where two walls meet at a corner and face that wall, that corner, you can hear yourself play, and you're more relaxed. Um, you get into this zen thing of playing, um, and it's great. It helps your muscle memory, so uh, I, I love doing that. Wow. Well, I mean, it's, I mean, it, it's proven to work really well. I mean, we hear all of that in your sound, Thank and you. it's just great. Um, so, um, you know, I, I, I just have to ask. We talked about it a little bit, but um, my, my big 
biggest question is three times with us in the past year, uh, <laughs> past two years. And, you know, why three? I mean, um, you know, I mean, what, well, what, what made it so appealing? I know you talked about the age, um, uh, the no age limit, um, but... I, I, I'm generally curious, aside from all the broadcasting, I mean, we, we have this card here. I mean, there's three experiences there. I mean, what, what well, can you I mean, tell us? To be able to play at Carnegie Hall is something that most musicians dream of doing. Um, I had never been to New York before. Uh, okay. So the first time I went to New York was the first time that, that I did oh, that. Wow. And uh, just so the people that are watching realize how stressful that performance was, there were two years worth of winners, so we didn't have a sound check. The only time that oh, the musicians got to those, experience yeah. the stage at Carnegie Hall was when it was your time to perform. So you really had to go out there and forget about the fact that, okay, I'm playing on the most prestigious, one of the most prestigious <laughs> stages in the world, and okay, forget about that, I gotta do my thing. So um, I was so proud of the kids the way that they came out there and just played with so much heart and feeling, mm. um, it, it made me feel so great knowing that the next generation is going to maintain this level of, of professionalism, of prowess, and uh, it was great. Um, like I said, I've always wanted to be in, in New York. Uh, once I got to know you and, and your parents and, and Anna, it's like, wow, this is a great, great organization. They're really caring about musicians. And uh, I, I just wanted to come back and do some more. And I've been lucky enough to get picked. So I'm very blessed in that regard. Wonderful. Oh, well, thank you for that. Yeah, this, um, you know, I mean, we, I, you know, I completely forgot that we didn't do any sound checks for that yeah. first one. <laughs> so long time ago and yeah. you know, things have changed. But yeah, it, it's been great having you for all these. And then, you know, in Fredonia with yes. uh, the West New York Chamber Orchestra and then back at Carnegie. And then yes. you'll be back with us again. But, you know, I mean, we um, I, I need to add, you know, as part of your uh, Fredonia performance, with Western New York Chamber Orchestra, you actually stayed an extra day and did a lecture on uh, Berrios mm -hmm. and a master class where, uh, with the guitar students there, where mm -hmm. uh, they, they played works of Berrios. Right. Um, and th that was kind of like a, um, um, an add-on that we did that we were fortunate to have. And Yeah, I was excited that you were able to pull that one off so quickly. Um, the students were all great. They're great players. Um, their teacher is a great teacher, had a mm -hmm. lot of great ideas, uh, great questions from the students. Um, and I did a, a, a master class with three of their players. And uh, I had a ball. I, I, I wish I could go back and hang with them some more. They were all great students. Oh, that would be great. Yeah, when, we, when I saw you giving that class, um, you know, I just knew that you had a knack for professing knowledge and teaching. Then, and it was... Um, you know, it's just like we, we, we got we to gotta see what else we could do with this guy here. <laughs> um, you know, and we, we actually prepared a short clip highlighting that class that we can show right now. Oh, cool. Yeah. So let's enjoy. Good. 
Even though it's very percussive, you have to make sure that all the notes in these runs right. come out. Right. Okay. So you have to think of it almost as you have two instruments, a bass player and a top player. This is a basic concept for all Latin music. you got to have attitude. It's like, you know, think of yourself as, as like uh, a torador. A torador doesn't go, you're both. It's like, it's like attitude. That was a fun-filled two hours, I remember. You, you gave the lecture first for an hour, yeah. and we taped that as well. We'll have to show that, um, and and we can show the whole class as well. Uh, two hours of great fun. I, I Just watching the clip, I remember just thinking, wow, I, when you mentioned um, Roboto was Barrios's middle name. It should have <laughs> been. It should have been. See, the thing with Bar Agustin Barrios, just a quick note on him, he felt that music was the most sincerest form of, of communication. Therefore, it should never be done the same way twice. All his performances, he would have general pieces that he played often, but they were never played the same way. He was all about not so much, okay, this major third over here, okay, I, I need three half steps. He wasn't theoretical in that way. With him, it was all from from the heart. As long as it moved his heart, he would do it. Um, he was an amazing, an amazing composer and guitarist. Yeah, he wrote beautiful music. And, you know, I'm remembering something from that lecture now that we didn't show. We don't have time to show the clip. But um, you had mentioned that um, he actually recorded his music faster in the beginning because of yeah. the limits of the records. Right. Um, can you tell us a little bit about <coughs> that? Because I think... Our, our viewers and our young students will and teachers will be interested to know okay. what, so, what your that, research uncovered with that. Right. This was back in, my God, in the 20s, early 20s. Uh, Agustin Barrios was the first guitarist to record, even before Andre Segovia. Um, and back in those days, you only had two minutes to record a piece, and it was only on one side of acetate these really heavy albums. Yeah, those glass and, um, 78s, right? Right. Yeah. And if they didn't have Pro Tools back then, so if you made a mistake, okay, do it again. You had to play perfectly, and he only had two minutes. And so he had a lot of pieces that were longer than two minutes, and so he always had to play things either faster or cut things off. So on his recordings, he plays that Julia Florida. <laughs> He does it that fast so he can get it into the two minutes. But it's a love song. But if he played it that slow, he wouldn't be able to fit it in. So yeah. a lot of the music that he played back then, he later on in life, wanted to re-record all that stuff, but he was already getting a little on the frail side and, and he couldn't do it. Um, but uh, yeah, he hated all those albums that he recorded. There was one time where he had a contract to record five albums a year for five years. So those wow. 25 albums, he hated them. He wanted to redo all oh, of them, wow. but he never got a chance They're to. They're all the speed of, version. Yeah. Right. Wow. Right. And you know, it, it, it's funny. I'll add a comment before we move on. Um, you know, I was a uh, fortunate many years ago when I was studying opera to sit in on a master class uh, with uh, James Vaughn uh, from La Scala, and he said uh, <laughs> to many of the singers, "You can't do a romantic piece fast." Yeah. or loud there's no such thing as a fast and loud romance mm -hmm. and you know and his point was that the the student was trying to get through things too fast and was like blaring loud and you know and she sounded great but she just needed to be quieter you know and was uh, his big point but you know it, it's it's funny like that that like actually made a big difference for me 
um, in perceiving music. And then to um, hear your um, your research about how Berrios had to play it too fast because of the limitations, mm -hmm. I mean, it really shed a new light on everything for me and I think all of those students out there. Um, and it's just you know great that you're able to uncover that and present so much. I mean, that was just the tip of the iceberg of what you presented, but... Um, I love to teach, so if there are any guitar players out there that have any questions, you can track me down through social media. Yeah, it, it's a real treat, folks. And um, we will definitely have to show um, more of these uh, broadcasts, uh, of these uh, videos on broadcasts coming up. Um, but we have to start um, moving forward here with this broadcast. I'm moving along, and it's so great here. But, uh, you know, I mean, you've been with us three times, and you're going to be with us for a fourth, only this time you're on the directing and production team. And uh, so, um, you know, what, what, what are your thoughts about uh, putting this guitar ensemble together? Well, I think that it's going to be so exciting to have guitars from all over the world come together and play music. Um, we don't get that opportunity too much to do ensemble work. There is music out there for guitar orchestras, but usually it's if you're a part of a conservatory of music, uh, mm -hmm. San Francisco Conservatory of Music has got a great, great guitar ensemble uh, led by my former teacher, David Tannenbaum. Um, but you know, usually that's the only time that you get to play in a guitar orchestra. So to have the students from all over the world come together and play in a 20-piece guitar orchestra, mm -hmm. we're going to be playing a piece, uh, piece by Soar, by Bach, by Astor Piazzolla. So it's going to be a wide range of stuff. Uh, I'm really looking forward to it. It's going to be some great music. Definitely. I, I can't wait. Um, and let, let's just show a little bit of the website here. We have a whole landing page. Um, we have this is on progressivemusicians.com. We also have the same information um, on uh, soundespercivocompetition.com. Um, but you know, here it is. You know, we have a three-day. Um, well, it's over five days, but a three-day intensive workshop. You know, we arrive on June twenty-eighth and perform on July first, and um, go home in. Uh, ever so loving bliss on July 2nd. Um, and um, if you want to participate, uh, we're accepting applications and they are due on November 15th. All you have to do is submit your very best representation uh, on a video with your application and then we will pre-screen for the live auditions. So mm -hmm. we have all the information here. Ah, here's the important date. So, you know, applications due by November 15th and then we will know who's auditioning live in a month and then our live auditions will be somewhere within this window in february between the 5th and 16th and the live auditions will actually be a workshop with uh julio and um you know kind of a workshop in disguise a little bit so um you know and it'll be live broadcast it'll be streamed on our platforms and you know it, it'll be a very very um fun uh couple of broadcasts there and then um those are selected will come to new york and we will get to it we'll be rehearsing in a new york studio and then we will move to the stage um where we will have a sound check by the way i should mention that um and you know we have all the regulations here that you can click on and download and you know it's just here's all of the package uh, the whole performance package you get for performing in this and working in this workshop here mm -hmm. we have an archive video with metal certificates the full color program booklet um tickets for the performers um you know group interview on social media platforms um yeah and you know, we have all the information here about tuition and application deadlines again here and um you know you can just click right here to apply and the application comes up you know here's our typical schedule oh and yes program which might might change a little bit or might not but um here are the here's the music that um, we're pitching for the program with youtube links to hear the recordings and it, excerpts right here so the live auditions will um require you to learn these excerpts and that's what you'll be working on with um master julio and you know we have 
more on Julio here and more on the event and a fun little picture here. And that's just really going to be a lot of fun. And uh, we can't wait. Um, I want to just take two seconds here and let everybody know that guitar is not the only ensemble that we have. If you go to our Laureate Ensembles page, you'll see that we have one of two all intensive string workshops with uh, uh, Emil Chernovsky. Uh We have a cello choir with uh, Master John Kaboff. And we have a flute choir with uh, Rita D'Arcangelo. And uh, wow, there's so many things here. Oh, here's a guitar ensemble. And then we have another all strings ensemble with um, Kelly Hall Tompkins. And we just did a little spotlight on her this morning on our 10 a.m. broadcast. And uh, Teresa Laiz is doing a Cassinets workshop. And she's uh, bringing her own group and has a competition if you'd like to join her group. We have all that information on our landing page. And then um, our, we just added um, a vocal intensive workshop led by the amazing Justin Pomatlars. And th there's just so many things in addition to the, um, uh, to the um, concerto and recital opportunities that we have and all the composer opportunities. And, you know, just check out our homepage and all the information is there. And w we just can't wait. Um, our deadline to apply for ensembles is November 15th, which is a little bit after the solo deadlines, but, you know, it, it's all there, and you can always contact us at uh, director at progressive music that director at progressive musicians dot com. <laughs> Say my own company name properly, <laughs> um, and we're we're happy to get back to you. You can message us on our social medias as well, and we we live on those. So, um, uh, Julio, did you have anything else that you wanted to like add about this um... before we sign off here? Well, I hope that a lot of guitarists come over and audition. Uh, don't be shy about auditioning. Um, the music is not that hard. So um, a lot of people will be able to play the music, I think. Uh, and if not, it's one of those things where, well, you'll, have, you'll get to know what it is you need to work on. That way next year, maybe you can do this. But it, um, definitely, yeah. yeah, and yeah, everybody gets something out of the live audition, you know, and yeah. that's one of our biggest um, goals in in mm -hmm. both of our missions, um, Sound Espressivo mm -hmm. and Progressive Musicians, is that um, everyone who auditions gets to walk away with something, you know, even if they weren't selected to go on the final program, mm -hmm. there's something they could walk away with to improve and come back. And we've seen many people come back and it's like, wow, what have you been doing the last six months? Yeah. You've really been practicing. And, you know, that, that also yeah. goes to the private teachers. We're not, mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're going to take like that much credit. Um, but yeah. the, the private teachers gets like the 99.99% yeah. of that credit there and the families as well. Um, but yeah, we really, um, yeah, we really have a lot of fun and enjoy witnessing um, the fruits of everybody's labor yeah. as they keep coming back, and it's wonderful. Um, do we have any more comments that we would like to put up on the screen? Um, all right, Julio is the best. <laughs> yes, he is. Yep. Do you know her? <laughs> no, I don't. Yeah, Joan Rice Julio is marvelous. Such a talented performer and conductor, plus a warm human being. I do know her. Yep. <laughs> Wonderful. Check is oh. in the mail. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> and mm. inspirational. And mm. yeah. Wow. Thank you, everybody, I, I, for making these comments. Yeah. I have to make a comment. I love teaching. Um, right now, I work for the Santa Rosa Symphony in their education department, and I'm going to be working in the Simply Strings program during the school year, helping fourth through sixth graders learn to play violin and cello. I am like a pig in slop right now. I am Excellent. so looking forward to this. Um, Santa Rosa Symphony is a great organization. Um, they've been voted the best regional symphony in California. So I, I'm, I tied myself up with a great organization. So, oh, that's like wonderful. I said, I love to teach. Well, wow, and th they're lucky to have you. Thank you. So, um, well, wrapping up here, um, yeah, so we have had uh, Julio Reyes here, a uh, jack of many trades and a master of all. <laughs> and um, Julio, it was really great having you here and getting well, to know you a lot for having better. Me, James. And, thanks for having me. You know, so, just a reminder to work with Julio and our good. 
guitar ensemble um you know i check out progressive musicians.com sound competition.com and the application date uh deadline is november 15th and you can email us for more info we are live every day at 12 p.m. Eastern with new programs that portray our many artists, past participants, teachers, and we're here to present new and unique topics in the field of music and education. We've, we're streaming on every platform that you can imagine. <laughs> um, we're here. Um, you know, Find us, uh, look us up, and we'll say hello back. And we have so much um overwhelming support and yeah here are all of our supporters here there's so many of them to read but i um, each and every one of these organizations um has contributed greatly to our programming and to all of our events and thank you for that and you know another shout out to the private teachers oh and oh our team yes yes we have an amazing team of tech wizards back here that um you know work to get the best picture and sound and are moving all these special effects as i'm talking and we could not do it without this amazing team thank you guys and yes a uh, quick shout out to the private teachers again you you're all doing amazing work and you're very inspirational and you don't get paid nearly enough for the amount of work that you do it's not a nine to five job that never goes recognized very well and we just love to recognize that um, because you all deserve it okay so we yes live every day at noon yeah i said that and with that we are going to sign off here i'm james welch uh owner of progressive musicians and your host here at virtual concert halls today and we have had julio reyes here and thank you julio thank, and thank you, you everybody have a great afternoon bye-bye <laughs>